The baddest dude would have these long sideburns, man. He would come down and do the shake move. But he really wasn't shake move. He was nervous condition. So he'd be shaking, but he wouldn't fake it. He was just nervous, man. Right. Yeah. Is that, right. Is he the same guy that would come from the top of the key and slam? No, no, man. No, that was Dr. J. Hey, where were you at? He said, I'm just two. I couldn't get her. I couldn't get any better of an intro than this. Welcome to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes. And look, it's Monday, and that means when you talk about a meaningful Monday, it couldn't get any more meaningful than having my next guest, who's an iconic entertainer, both in the comedic realm and the big screen. He has Don stage of some of the best comedians, actors in his illustrious career. Welcome, my very special guest, the one. The only Sinbad to the Rudolph Show for the very first time. Welcome to the show, Sinbad. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me on the Rudolph Show for the very first time. So thank you for that. Look, when we when we when we look at your career, I know you're on tour right now. I know you're you sitting, you're headed to the airport, and you're driving. Is that is that working out so well for you? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Going to the airport always works out. <laughs> as long as you're going where you want to go, <laughs> versus, versus right, where you man. don't. <laughs> they, just, just another day in paradise, man. Just another day in paradise. Well, you know what? You 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 seem to know paradise very well. You've been doing this for a uh, better part of you know forty years. You started in the nineties and. A lot of the, the types of movies you're in Jingle All the Way. Love the movie. Everybody should know that one. A Necessary Roughness. I, I think, in my personal opinion, when I look at your career, I think back at that, I look at Scott Bakula and your appearance with him on, on the movie. What was it like working with, with Scott and in your very first movie like that? Well, you know, man, it was like, you know, for me, it's, when you, you do your first like, big movie, that's, you'll never get that experience again. I had fun. It was a it was because it was a sports movie. We had a lot of athletes. It was it was crazy. We had fun. We, we had you know we had Kathy up there. Kathy the Island one of the main models at the time. So dude, it was it was just a cool experience. I always I will always have a uh, remember we're all in in Texas hanging out in Dallas like, almost every night. So man, it was good. I and mean, what can you complain about? <laughs> Well, when you're Sinbad, not a whole lot to complain about since you're on tour still. Uh, were you in New York yesterday? Um, somewhere down there in New York? Yeah. How did that in, show in go? In Nyack, New York. <laughs> Nyack, New York. I'm going to tell you something. My first time there, it's cool at this age that there's still some places to go that's so cool, man. We had a great time. We got uh, my, my son's with me, Royce's with me. He's filming everything. We're shooting everything. We're putting stuff on now. We're going to take over social media. It's time just to take, not just be Facebook Live, Instagram, to blow it up. Like, I might make my own app. Send that app. Fire app. Fire on everybody. That's going to be our new thing. Sounds good There's to me. Comedy named Devon Stewart. He's on the road with us, so we're checking him out. He doesn't eat right, but other than that, he's pretty cool. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, you don't get involved in those bad habits of what you're eating versus what you should be eating. I, uh, so, so you find yourself hitting the the greens, and I don't mean the golf course uh, during your tour. No, never eat that crap. <laughs> so green does not apply to you, other than uh, the we golf course. Eat, we don't eat green. We don't <laughs> eat anything green. <laughs> so no celery or spinach or anything. No, I <laughs> found out that stuff kills you. The latest report that stuff actually kills you. Well, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, I had some broccoli last night, and I'm still breathing. So I guess we're on the same page You want to try, try popsicles. Popsicles have been uh, the newest breakthrough. A lot of kids are suffering from epilepsy and stuff. Popsicles brings them back to life. Popsicles? Wow. I, yeah. didn't, I, I didn't know that. Now, our, now when you get done you with the popsicles... <laughs> Do, do the popsicles have the little uh, kind of like you'd find in some type of uh, dessert? You know, you you, you kind of open a fortune cookie and you have a, the the little label, you know, telling you get well soon. Is there like some type of dear Abby card on uh, a statement on one of those popsicle sticks? No, if you find the paper, the popsicle stick, it'll 
there was somebody in the factory that wasn't being right. That was different. So one was made here, one was made beyond. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's right, man. You don't want the box with the with this paper inside. That was made at home. That's called the Kool-Aid kit. Hey, I'm guilty. Guilty as charged. <laughs> I've had a lot of the Kool-Aid, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Sometimes a little hater raid, I'll be the honest. Whole country, the whole country, the whole country is drinking Kool-Aid right now. Oh boy, we're gonna go there. We're talking about Donald Trump That's now. Right. You, you, That's right. <laughs> you appeared on Celebrity Apprentice. What was that experience like? And did you have a chance to meet Donald Trump before he became president? I knew Donald Trump back in the eighties before he was Donald Trump Celebrity Apprentice. He's been pretty much a, a jerk since that day. He's a, he's just a con man. He's always been a con man. He's a lonely man. He's a crazy man. He's maybe a sympathetic man. And maybe man with early onset Alzheimer's. Early Alzheimer's. I never really thought about that. Is is that reflected in his hairstyle, do you believe? That's, re- that's reflected in him loving his daughter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back in time, so make sure you turn the time warp machine on, everybody. <laughs> You were in the Air Force, or some people like to call it, and I'm not making fun of the military. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for serving the military. But I've always called it the Chair Force. Why? Because you sit in a chair behind a very powerful machine. Uh, and, and you did the very same thing as a boom operator on a KC-135. I don't even know what that is. I don't oh, yeah. care. <laughs> a boom operator, as you can feel that, we fill airplanes in the air. Uh, Air Force, the Air Force is a, it's a, it's a group of men. I, I got kicked. Everything taught me it when you get up sometimes and be on as much as I could. But that's what I came up to support a talent show called Top and Blue. So I was always, you know, in debt to the airport. Well, good. And thank you for serving when you did. Just wanted to throw that out there. Cool, thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. Now, th- there were some conversations about some mischievousness going on. And, of course, be it for me to think that Sinbad himself is mischievous. But uh, it almost included a dishonorable discharge. What happened? <laughs> Why did that get to that point? I didn't get a dishonorable. I got a general. I got a fuck you get to it. I kicked it and walked away from it. Good for you, better man than I. I was three points shy of getting into the into the navy, so I I, I didn't yes, have it. I was uh, I was uh, it was just things I, mean, I was trying to find myself, and then the things I did, I didn't realize. Not liable in the military. I didn't realize you day walling, but like it. I didn't know you couldn't impersonate officers. I didn't know you actually had to be at work every day. These are the things I had to learn. Everybody has to learn that. <laughs> Good thing you were not the yeah. only one who had to learn that. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, I didn't know that. I know that people get upset because you don't show up. I didn't know that. Huh. Imagine that. There's no calling in sick unless you really, truly are sick. Yeah, man. <laughs> man, you don't call in sick. If you call in sick, they know where you are. Kids never call in. So you just show up the very next day and say, hey, did you miss me? <laughs> no, you didn't. You act like nothing happened. That's the key to being a con man. You act like nothing happened. Ah, so you're pulling a Trump then. You learned it the long... No, I did it first. <laughs> I, did, I did it first. He's the cop. <laughs> Fair enough. Look, when when we look... And, and Okay, I'm a child of the 80s. I'll be honest. I call myself out. I'm 43 years old. But I, I look back and there's one show that stands out to me. And it's your entry on... St- Star Search, and if anybody knows what Star Search is, you're as old as I am, you would have seen Sinbad himself on stage. What was it about being on Star Search? I mean, do you, you lost to John Kassir, which is obviously no big deal because, you know, you're, you were turned into being famous without it. But what was it like losing to, to John Kassir? You know, what's it about? You know, for me, with Star Trek, it was never about winning. It was about going on TV, uh, getting a chance to, to have an audience. There's no such thing as the funniest comedy. You, know, you just got to be as funny as you can be. There's some people like you, and some don't. You just like basketball players. There's people that don't like LeBron James. Of course, those folks are brain damage, but they're actually people that don't like LeBron James. So what you do is 
you do the best you can, you do the damage you can. I just wanted to go out there and try to get all you to come watch me. So it was the best thing ever for me because now I started now so. Well, you you did just that, and when you get an audience, when, when when I think of an audience, you have an opportunity, and someone you don't know who's watching, and I say this all the time on the Rudolph Show, you don't know who's watching, you don't know who's going to be listening as well, and that's certainly something that you found yourself in, as you had received a numerous amount of requests to be on set of different television shows. You were on the Cosby Show, a spinoff called A Different World, again another '80s uh, show. But you found yourself, you know, playing with people, playing with people like Melissa Bonet uh, or uh, Lisa Bonet, excuse me, as Denise Huxtable spin off of the Cosby Show, and Marissa Tomei. What was it like working with Lisa Bonet that that made you want to stay as you were there from eighty eight to ninety one on set? Well, you know, it's not about saying something. I mean, it was the whole crew, it was the whole cast, it was the a very unique situation, but at the time, it was, was cool. And it probably wants to be one of the, just, I guess, points to highlight the career that had a chance to bring different world. Melissa Dumay was gone when I got there. They had just took the show. And I think it's most Melissa was gone when I came on. Because I was not an original member. I earned my, my way onto the show. I was I was warming up the audience as a comic warming up to the audience. That's the show. So I, I was I got a chance to uh Cosby saw me, put me on the Cosby show for an episode, they put me on a different world. No, you were talking about how some that are brain damaged don't like LeBron James, and we'll talk about the Cavaliers in, in just a second. But LeBron James himself has done it. What is it about LeBron James that has you enamored over his career? Uh, now heading to an Eastern Conference final, which clearly he is being accustomed to showing up in, that makes you a LeBron James fan. It wasn't just it wasn't just I can't be a champion. It's demeanor. I mean, I looked at this, I looked at that uh, the documentary they did when he was a kid. It was the Living Champion. How he became LeBron James, the, the path that he went, the way he carries himself. You know what makes LeBron James great? I mean, the greatest to me. Him and him and Michael are in a category that's almost beyond anybody. They make the people from them great. There's a lot of guys doing triple doubles. There's a lot of guys get MVP, but they don't make their teams greater. Michael Jordan's team on paper. I look at LeBron James. You're talking about how how he finds himself in very good company between LeBron James and. Uh, Michael Jordan, and I think to myself, Michael Jordan wasn't so much that he was a, he, he turned into more of a passer than he did in the uh, in the early parts because he was just sort of in the game. He missed so many shots. It was consistent that he was missing those shots, uh, and we seem to have lost Sinbad. Hopefully he'll give us a call right back. But looking at Michael Jordan, talking about that for half a minute, Michael Jordan and, and LeBron James, yeah, there's certainly a part of their – uh, respective uh, top 10, top 5, probably some of the best uh, NBA basketball uh, elites that you'll probably find in NBA history. And I like LeBron James, and he's done so much for the game. He's done so much for um, a, a variety. Of course, he's been to nine nine conference finals, and, and a guy who, in all fairness, to him, it doesn't matter who he's playing. He could be playing the Celtics. He could be playing the Wizards. He could be playing and the eventual... At least I'm calling it now. I'm going to say it like it is. He is meeting the Gold State Warriors in the NBA Finals, and not because I'm a Warriors fan. I'm a fan of the game, and I've said it before here on the Rude Dog Show. I'm a fan of the game. Hopefully we can get Sinbad to call back so we can talk about it a little bit further. But uh, how would you guys like, like Sinbad? Wasn't that, wasn't that fantastic? Just for a little bit of time that I had him in. What a great guy. Uh, he's funny. I almost could not stop cracking up here on the end. But when you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers and you look at the Boston Celtics, or maybe even they'll face off in a decisive Game 7, I think that game's going on tonight uh, between the Washington Wizards and the Boston Celtics. And whoever takes it, you know, it really doesn't matter. LeBron James, uh, at, at this point, just practicing, he's watching, he's listening. Uh, he's going to find out exactly who's going to take it. Spurs, baby. Uh, that's Western Conference Finals. I'm not even worried about it. They're down 0-1 on top of it, Wilson, uh, in all fairness. 
but I, I, I do like the Western Conference matchup. You know, could, could the Spurs pull, uh, pull it out against the Golden State Warriors? Well, it's possible they could, but they're down 0-1 right now without Kawhi Leonard. They are negative 24, I think 24, 25 points. Why? Because he went down. One of the best players on the Spurs went down. And now you find yourself wondering, well, where is... Where is he going to be? Is he going to be in the lineup? Is he going to be part of the rotation? Is he going to be on the bench? But in all fairness, when I look at the Spurs themselves, I think to myself, they're going to be there. This is going to be a game, and I believe it's going to be taken a game five or even uh, a game, <clears throat> well, it could be a game six for that matter. Why? Because both teams have excellent amount of talent in the Western Conference Finals. So thank you, Wilson, for that. And yeah, David Richards, I know. I think you're wondering what the sports are, but when a guy like Sinbad calls in, uh, we're trying to get his take uh, on why he likes LeBron James. He said that he's he's a team player. He made everybody better, and he did. He certainly did. He did that in Miami. He's done that in Cleveland. And here they are again trying to repeat the performance of winning an NBA Finals championship, but that has to go directly through the Golden State Warriors. So... I like it. Uh, I don't know about the Spurs, though. It, 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 it's still look. It's still early. It's still 0-1. They're down one game. They're going to come back to tie the game. LaMarcus Aldridge has to have a much, much better game. There are key, key shots that he made, and, and I appreciate his... You know, he did it without Kawhi Leonard in the first uh, game. Uh, but with Kawhi Leonard, he does it all. He's a go-to guy from the perimeter. He knows how to pass it. He's an all-around team player. He also makes people very much so better than without him. So I look for the Spurs to come back, tie this game, look to be much more uh, competitive uh, down the stretch into the third and fourth quarter where they actually had lost out uh, with Kawhi Leonard landing awkwardly. He's having an MRI today. So hopefully that MRI from him will actually come back. I like Popovich. Don't get me wrong. He'll make the adjustments. Even without Kawhi Leonard, he will make the adjustments. He'll make sure that he puts the right people in the right position to pass the ball, shoot the ball, to guard defense on the other end, to keep guys out, to block them on the post, to prevent you know unnecessary uh, shots from from the Warriors. You have Kevin Durant. You you can sh you can switch the ball around to Draymond Green. He can drive on the inside. Uh, look. When we talk about Boston in, in, in the Eastern uh, semis, which is, again, Game 7, I believe that game is tonight, I look at Boston and I think to myself, can Isaiah Thomas pull emotional energy from the loss of his sister? My condolences to him and his family. But he's playing and he's doing it. He may have said something that was off-kilter to a fan who may have said something derogatory, him or herself. We don't know. We don't know the side of the conversation. But I like the fact that Isaiah Thomas could come out he could be the driving force for this Boston team, and I look for Boston to give everything they have, and I mean everything they have because it could be their very last game. Same thing you can say for the Wizards and John Wall. How about that clutch three-point shot? Did he walk into that one? Was there enough defense? Maybe. I don't know. You know what? I'll be honest with you. You bring up a very good point. The Wizards are better matchup versus the Cavs, but I like the fact that the Cavaliers are so deep with Kevin Love and Irving and JR, they have so much power. They have so much driving forth with, with LeBron James leading with a fast break opportunity to go to the hoop. And you know what? It's possible. Uh, and I like John Wall. I, I like what he's doing right now. Uh, I, I don't know that they have enough from a bench perspective in order to, uh, to win to get to the next level. And of course, uh, I, I think Sinbad, I think it's fair to say that Sinbad decided to, um, jump on the plane that he was driving to uh, somewhere. I'm not quite sure where he was, but <laughs> needless to say, Sinbad, thank you so much for coming on to the Rudog Show. Uh, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, anytime, anytime, you are more than welcome to call in to the show. And thank you very much for taking your time out to do so as you're driving to the airport. Safe travels to you as well. Uh, you know what, Boston? Boston can win. Boston can win this matchup against the Wizards. I think that there is something to be said for the Wizards on the other side, because they've done so much. <laughs> oh, boy, there's the pun, Wilson. Different world. Yeah, okay, different world. He could be, but he did, you know, this guy, he's done He's done everything. I mean, how he's won a, an, an 
NAACP award in 95. And the, the guy is so awarded, you know, historically. And in all fairness, he's been a coach. He's been a teacher. He's been a mailman. Um, he, he's done, he's done so many different things. And for the opportunities, uh, that, that he's been given, he's run with it. He's done his absolute best with them. And in all fairness, um, he's probably in a different world right now as he's jumped onto the plane. So, yes, he's an absolutely great comedian. There's no doubt about it. He's done more with lemons uh, than anybody. He's made lemonade. He's made lemon meringue. He's made uh, <laughs> those little lemon drops, you know, you take when, you, uh, <laughs> when you're young. But anyway, great stuff. Uh, I love the input. Thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in. This is Rudy Ress on the Rude Dog Show on WBLCSports.com. Hopefully, I can get him to call back if uh, if he's on a short trip. Maybe as he exits the plane, he can call back in. I don't know. But uh, anyway, great show, great stuff. I love, I love having him on. It was fantastic uh, to know that he could call in for a little bit of time. Uh, but any time is appreciated. So, again, thank you, Sinbad, for that. I'm going to take an actual, uh, a quick break here momentarily. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rudog Show on WBLZSports.com. Uh, we're going to come back with a little bit more on LeBron James and the Eastern Conference Finals matchup between either Boston or the Washington Wizards. We'll find out. We'll be right back. Meet me in the lion's den at 9 a.m. here on WBOZ Sports page on Facebook. Catch me at 9 a.m. Be there, or are you scared to enter the lion's den because you might not make it out? Well, I'm going to make it out every time because I'm part of WBOZ Sports where we got balls. With over 30 years of experience, the smart people call on Doug Pepper painting and pressure washing. Interior, exterior, commercial, or residential, Doug Pepper does it all. Is your house looking ugh? Then call on Doug. Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Washing, 404-966-3361. Mention WBLZ Sports and you'll receive a special We've Got Balls discount. That's Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Washing, 404-966-3361. Hey, wrestling fans, Gary Grinder here letting you know that the Eye of Wrestling podcast comes your way every Friday at 7 p.m. right here on the WBLZ Sports Network. Join me and Martin Hughes as we get you caught up on all the wrestling news and discuss pro wrestling from the classics of yesterday to today. That's the Eye of Wrestling podcast every Friday at 7 p.m. right here on WBLZ Sports, where we've got the balls. My name is Paul Heyman. And I am the advocate for the most non-PG ass kicker of the PG era. WBLZ Sports. We've got balls. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve all your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call, no matter the size of the job, at 740-438-7173. Mention WBLZ Sports, and you'll get a discount. That's Gym Service, 740-438-7173. Hey, just in time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is Rudy Reyes of the Rude Dog Show at WBLCSports.com. I, uh, I wanted to come back from the break and talk about LeBron James himself. And, and I believe that me and Simba were actually onto something, and the way that we were, we were trending was that LeBron James, 74 games played, 37.9 minutes per game that he's played. That's a, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of time for anybody. He's done it in Miami. He's doing it in Cleveland. And just when I said the word Cleveland, I thought to myself, man, this is a place without championships. And I'm wrong. And I'm completely wrong. There's no question. There's no doubt about it. I am wrong. 
I'm wrong from your standpoint because why? Cleveland Cavaliers won it last year. And and I look at him and I think to myself, you know, 18.2 field goal attempts making 9.9 at a 5.548 percentile. That's that's amazing. He's done everything that he's needed, that he has been needing to do in the postseason. What makes it more interesting is that LeBron James is the kind of guy who makes everybody better. I think he was more of a team player, in all fairness, by being able to dish the ball, send the send the passes to other people. And I like that. And yes, Kawhi Leonard is out tomorrow. He will not be playing. Uh, Pop uh, decided to pull him and say, no, we're not taking a chance. He's out. So it's official. He is out of game two, which means that LaMarcus Aldridge is really going to have to make the step up to have the conversation about what does he need to do to make his team better? So we're talking about LeBron James. What LaMarcus Aldridge needs to do is become the difference maker. The one that you did not expect to be the difference maker in this series. And I think that LaMarcus Aldridge can certainly be just that. He has a great post-up jumper. He's good from three-point range. He's a good passer. He knows how to divvy the ball. And they need to make the impact, and that's what they need to continue to do. And I think that the, the Spurs, because of LaMarcus Aldridge, despite having Kawhi Leonard out, and it was proven so far, but that was different. That was against a different opponent. Was it not? Okay, so let's take a step backwards here. LaMarcus Aldridge is a difference maker for this Spurs team when Kawhi Leonard was out. He was. He definitely was. And I think to myself, when I look at LaMarcus Aldridge, he's a guy who needed to step up when he needed to. He's similar to that of John Wall, where John Wall needed to step up and be great. Great players make great plays. That's what makes him great. That's what makes him great. It's proven. Time and time again, year in and year out, that's what makes great players great when they make the shots they need to make to be the difference, to win the game. And that's exactly what John Wall did. And again, going back to this Boston uh, Wizards Game 7, when you tire out your best player, that's the worst thing you could possibly do. Why? Because there's no benefit to you. You're going to lose him down the stretch. He's not going to be that much of an impact. And then you wait for him to recover. Well, what happens to somebody who isn't hydrated enough, who spends a lot more time on the hardwood than he does replenishing his body? Injuries. Injuries. Injuries will happen. They're a part of the game. You land awkwardly, as Kawhi Leonard did. You find out that there was a lot of contributing factors as to why. He could have stepped on somebody's foot on his landing down. He could have uh, you know, slipped on some sweat that had dripped on the floor. I mean, there's a whole variety of reasons. Bottom line is this. Well, Marcus Aldridge needs to step up in place of not having Kawhi Leonard. End of story. Period. That's it. I'm live right now on WBLZSports.com and... Uh, everybody can uh, tune in. I'm on Facebook Live as well. So add your questions. I have Jorge uh, Emilio Lora asking his questions. Wilson Tribe asking his questions as well. We had Sinbad on uh, the very first initial part of the show. Somehow we lost him, probably because he went into airport space. <laughs> and clearly <laughs> not able to communicate because of the uh, you know all the planes overhead. I don't know if he's uh, he's obviously leaving. Uh, leaving New York, and I think some people have uh, have left New York right along with him. I don't know if, uh, who was with him necessarily, but I'll tell you this much. It was great having Sinbad on, so thank you so much, Sinbad. I appreciate it. So when I look at LeBron James, the person, when I look at him from, and, and look, all I know is is what I've seen on TV. I haven't had the pleasure of interviewing him, but look, if you're LeBron James and you're listening right now, just call in. To the Rude Dog Show, 216-539-9967. I'm trying to get uh, my, uh, my my Skype to work so that way you can call in. So my apologies. I had to turn it off for, for that very reason because, you know, when somebody calls in, it doesn't work. It just doesn't make sense. It, it never usually does. So in either case, when I look at LeBron James, I think to myself, you know, He's 32 years old. He's on the wrong side of 30. Doesn't mean he's going to stop playing necessarily. But, I mean, look, he's already won two championships. He's trying to make it three. And he states that it doesn't matter how many conference finals you go to. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, who you beat or when you beat or how you beat him. But the bottom line is, is that he's done it. He continues to play at a very high level, has tons of years left in him. Could he pull a Tom Brady and play into his 40s? 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe not at the level that he's playing in right now. That I'm not sure of. But I like the fact that LeBron James can do it and do it well and do it with the talent that he has surrounding him. And yes, of course, they slouch in the regular uh, in the regular season by losing the games they probably shouldn't have lost and just became complacent losing their overall number one seed to the Boston Celtics. That's possible, and it's you know it's anybody's guess as to why they lost those games they shouldn't have. But when you look back at that last series against Toronto, and I call it a bye week because that's really what it was. It was a bye week against the Toronto Raptors and really just took care of them by basically sweeping them in four games. And there's really no comeback for that. They did everything they needed to do to beat them. Uh, he had 46 minutes against Toronto uh, last last week, 109, 102. Beat them again, uh, you know, 41 minutes at 115 to 94. Uh, he's a, he's a serious catalyst. I mean, 37 uh, in, in uh, May 3rd, 125 to 103. Look, the Cavaliers are on fire. They found the weakness. There wasn't enough there for DeMar DeRozan. Uh, there wasn't enough there from the supporting cast, and clearly not much of uh, a supporting cast. But you're right, Wilson, you're right. You're absolutely, that was what I was going to go to. There's a big conversation. Somebody who I'm trying to get on to the show, Domi Barrias, uh, who interviewed Kobe Bryant, Yesterday, while he was attending a uh, L.A. Sparks game uh, in relation to uh, the, the Sparks and WNBA, I don't think there's enough coverage for WNBA either, dummy. Uh, and I, I really don't. Why? Because there are a lot more outlets that can really have much more of a positive impact on what they're trying to do in the WNBA. If anybody doesn't know what that is, shame on you. But it is the uh, Women's National Basketball Association. But we're talking about LeBron James uh, being one of the best in the conversation with Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, speaking of which, he's probably a top five. I would say to, to, to not suggest, okay, to not suggest that LeBron James will not retire in the top five would would be hypocritical. I mean, there, there's no way you can look at LeBron James and suggest to yourself, well, you know, if, if he doesn't continue playing at a high level, if he doesn't continue doing this, he doesn't continue getting the, the average minutes per game or shooting for the field goal that, that he needs to win East or becoming a, a passer, look, he's going to follow the same trails as Michael Jordan, meaning that he's going to become more of an assistant to passing the ball around, being still a catalyst on the floor, but becoming more of a defensive presence, just like Kobe Bryant was to a degree, of course, to two different positions, but... I, I look at Michael Jordan, I think to myself, who's who's more? It was kind of a conversation I was trying to get to with Sinbad earlier on the show, but is he much more of a better defender, LeBron James, than Kobe Bryant? Or Michael Jordan? Eh, I don't know. I mean, he is 6'8", LeBron James, tall, lengthy, athletic, uh, and a guy that you look to to be a catalyst on the floor at all times when he is on the floor. I, I and I believe that uh, LeBron James will go down in a similar fashion, just like Michael Jordan did, becoming more of the defender, becoming more of the passer, and similar to Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant did the very same thing. He knew he was going to come to an end, that his NBA career was coming to an end. He turned more into a passer. Now, there are conversations in regards to Kobe Bryant as to whether or not he would ever sit down having a meal, and I spoke to one of his trainers uh, about a year ago or so, and they had stated that he didn't sit down and have lunch with his co-worker. We're talking about Derek Fisher. We're talking about maybe Shaquille O'Neal. Maybe Shaq sat at a table himself. I don't know. But I like the fact that uh, stories like that are out there because it shows you how human these guys really are instead of saying, oh, well, you know, he's going to uh, join us for this or he's going to join us for that and and, and in all fairness, Kobe Bryant never said he was going to do any of that. That was all predetermined uh, by by the Lakers staff. And, and they did what they needed to do. Uh, he did what he needed to do. He's won five championships. And, and it makes me think of those commercials uh, with Kobe Bryant a, a few years ago saying, well, you know, I still have five championship rings and LeBron James was still chasing his first uh, with the with the Miami Heat uh, and with Dwayne Wade in there as well. Of course, find himself with the Chicago Bulls this past year it didn't quite uh, pan out as they were heading towards a uh, a race of their of their own. But in either case, uh, I seem to have lost connection here. But you know, the show the show 
the show must go on. That's all there is to it. The show must go on. So I, I look at this Eastern Conference Final, and I think to myself, well, where is, where does LeBron James fit? Where, where does he fit categorically when you're talking about where he is, where he's going? Uh, does he land on an all-time list? And you're right, he is behind Magic Johnson. There's no doubt about it because Magic Johnson was an all-time supporting cast. Did you see the fakes that he had? On his way up to the hoop, Magic Johnson, in Showtime, he pretended he was passing the ball. Everybody forgets about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. What kind of sky hooks are those things? Were, were they stoppable? No, they were not stoppable. Nobody could stop the sky hook from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Nobody. 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 But the passes that Magic Johnson had given and the fake passes for him to drive to the hoop to suggest he was passing the ball to the outside perimeter for Kareem to hit a three or maybe even a sky hook. Nobody could pull it off like Magic Johnson. You're right. LeBron James has a little bit more time. He has a little bit more time. I say a little bit more time because he's not be able to play into his 40s or can he? I don't know. Seems to be a big debate because he's very athletic. He's smart. He's cerebral. He's a hard worker. Now, let's be honest here. Father time is undefeated. You can go into any league, any NFL. Okay. Ah, Larry Bird. Mm. I like... I, I, <laughs> Look, I like Larry Bird, Celtic, yes. But uh, Larry Bird, nonetheless, one of the best clutch. One of the best clutch guys. And, and you know what? In all fairness, when those two teams faced each other, Lake Show and the Boston Celtics, it was a battle for the ages. Magic Johnson faced off against Larry Bird every single time. There was a battle down the stretch. There was a battle in the paint. There was a battle outside in the guard position. There was a battle in transition defense, a battle in uh, uh, transition offense as well. Magic Johnson did everything he could and did it quite often against Larry Bird. He got the better of Larry Bird, in my opinion. Why? Because I was around to watch the Lakers when they were showtime <laughs> or the Lake Show, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so... That's, you know, in all fairness, I like Larry Bird. Don't get me wrong. Thank you, Wilson, for the for the commentary. I look at Larry Bird, and I, and I look at the Boston Celtics, and I think to myself, man, those guys were fantastic. One up on the Lakers for 16 championships versus 15 for the L.A. Lakers. But I think to myself, man, where does Matthew Johnson sit? Where should he be? Where, you know, where where does Matthew Johnson lie? Is he, is he on the top 10 all-time Lakers? Or is he all 10 top NBA, period? I don't know. Huge question. Huge question. I, I think that when you look at the NBA overall, and I think that when you look when you look back historically on the L.A. Lakers, they went to so many conference finals, 15 championships. They've, they've, they've done it. They've done it. They've been there and done it. And then you have Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant. They did it well for the Lakers. They did it well at any stadium that they were in. Make sure you get your tickets at SeatGiant.com. They are my new partner, yes, I said partner, that can get you the best. Would you want the best? Go to SeatGiant.com. And one thing that you'll notice, you don't buy, you just don't buy tickets. You can go to your ticket master. You can go to your... Uh, you know, you can go to your online, you know, trading posts for tickets and, you know, you'll either get some bum tickets at times or sometimes you won't. But I can tell you this much. You're not just buying tickets with cgiant.com. You are buying an experience, the experience with your kids, experience with your friends, experience with your family. Or if you're going solo, you can have a great experience yourself. Go to cgiant.com. They're my new partner here on the Rude Dog Show. Dot com. We're going to go back to this. Magic Johnson will be top five all time. Who's your top four? Anybody have a top four? I think Michael Jordan certainly one or two on that list. Uh, you can also put LeBron James at uh, top three. I think Kobe Bryant also still sits underneath Michael Jordan with some work to do by LeBron James, but he can catch up. LeBron James can catch up. Uh, very, very, very fast if he wins another title, comes back next year, does the very same thing that he needed to. I think uh, uh, 
there could be an argument as to whether or not, depending on what on what LeBron James does, if he sits out during the regular season at times where he shouldn't, that can hurt the game because this is a fan-driven league. There's no doubt about it. There's no question. I have no question about it. If I want to go to an NBA game and I want to see your player player, there, there, better, there better be a guy on the hardwood that I want to root for, and it better be uh, LeBron James, or it needs to be John Wall, or it needs to be Isaiah Thomas. It needs to be somebody that I'm going to look for. That's the reason why I'm attending the game, because of the fan-driven link. You don't have that. You're not going to sell tickets, and you're ruining the fan experience. You're ruining the fan experience. So sitting out during the regular season, no, not at all. He's your best player. Why would you allow him to sit down look, I understand their maintenance days. I had a conversation with some other constituents last week, last weekend, excuse me, and we were talking about how guys that are sitting out during the regular season, when you're a fan trying to go watch them play because they're your, they're, they're your favorite. See, LeBron James is the man, like, case in point. Because Sinbad is a LeBron James fan, and he went to go watch LeBron James play, do you honestly believe that he would not be disappointed? Do you not think that Sinbad would not post it on social media? I think he would. I, I, I think he would. Because you're going there to experience with your favorite player. And if you don't do that from a coaching standpoint and start your best player, then you're ruining the fan experience. If it's early during the regular season, if we're talking playoffs, that's one thing. Why? Because you always need to step up your A game, put on your game face, and play. And play. And be out there and make the impact, be the impact player that your team needs you to be. And I don't think that it's spoken enough. I don't I don't believe that when you look at the NBA for future references, what players are going to come out and be the impact player that you want them to be? Are they going to come out of a Pac-10? Or excuse me, Pac-12, or are they going to come out in the Big Ten uh, or, or Big? Uh, or, or you take any 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 league you want in the NCAA. But I like the fact that the NBA picks guys that will be an impact player because they do their scouting. Other leagues, other professional sporting leagues, you guys already know who they are. Don't do their due diligence enough so to get the guys that they need to get the talent that that respective NBA, NFL, NHL team needs. Now, it's not necessarily common in the NHL to find a guy who's extremely bad. Why? He'd be cut extremely fast. Right now, the Anaheim Ducks are down 0-2. to It says my my feathers uh, uh, <laughs> flare. <laughs> but what I also like in, in the fact that the Ducks are fighting. And if it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck, it must be a duck. But unless Anaheim can get more shots on goal opportunities, they're going to find themselves quacking like a duck and quacking outside of the NHL playoffs. Of course, the Penguins are also down uh, 0-1 as well. They looked very lethargic in different aspects of their game. And I, I just, uh, I look I look at the Penguins. Um, Halen was out due to lower body injury. Uh, Crosby, I don't, you know, I don't know what's going on with, with, the, with the Penguins. I don't even know what's going on with the Ducks. Uh, and but but when you look at the the NHL, when you look at guys who are your impact players, it's like saying I'm going to sit Sidney Crosby because he's you know because I think that's the right thing to do. Okay, based on injury standpoints, yes, he is the guy you want to sit. Yes, why would you put yourself at greater risk? Popovich is doing the very same thing with Kawhi Leonard. Say, look, we're not going to take a chance, but he's injured. So there was that's where the difference lies. We're going to sit Kawhi Leonard down. For this game, we're going to find out what we need to do. We need to regroup, reorganize, reassess what we need to do to make sure we put LaMarcus Aldridge in winning positions um, in any other pair we have as a part of our rotation. First legs are going to be key for the Spurs uh, because the Gold Seat Warriors bench is very, 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 did I see very? Very deep because they have Iguodala. He had a bruised knee yesterday leaving the hardwood. He'll be fine. You ice it. You put some heat on it, and he'll be just fine. Uh, and even without Kevin Durant, when you think of Kevin Durant, and when he was down, when he was injured, he was sitting outside as well. I had Ray Woodson on. Me and him were talking about that a couple weeks back. Uh, but I, I look at the Gold State Warriors and look how deep they are 
Greg Popovich has been doing a lot more with less. D'Antoni with the Rockets also doing much more with less. Unfortunately, it didn't. It took more than one player. Well, you could say uh, you could say it takes more than one person to raise a kid. You need a village, and that's exactly what the Houston Rockets said. Unfortunately, they had nobody in their village other than maybe Trevor Ariza uh, in order to get it done on the perimeter uh, on the three point line. Really didn't make any difference. In all fairness, when you look at uh, when you look at Mike D'Antoni and what he has done, Greg Popovich has been doing this for years. It's not like it's something that just was an epiphany to him. He didn't just wake up out of a out of a cold sweat. So you know, what? I think this is what we need to do. No, this guy's been doing it for years. He did it with the Admiral. Anybody know who he is? Yes, he's been doing it year in and year out. The Spurs will end up winning Game 2, and if they end up winning Game 2, this will be a series. Why? Because that gives Kawhi Leonard more time to relax, more time to rest, especially when it goes back to San Antonio. I like Kawhi Leonard. I like the fact that he's an all-around player. I like his dynamics. I like his personality. I like his attitude. I like his player mentality, getting other people involved. He's been doing it for years. Where do you think he learned it from? I mean, it's, it's not a big secret here. <laughs> I'm just I'm just calling it like it is, okay? When you have the Spurs and part of a Western Conference conversation, you cannot pass on Greg Popovich's ability to make the adjustments where they are needed. But again, Gold State Warriors certainly making a case for being one of the best teams, ranked number one in the West. Spurs ranked number two. So, number one versus number two. I like the Golden State Warriors. I like what they bring to the table. But when it's all said and done, because I'm not a fan of of NBA teams, I'm a fan of the team themselves and what they bring to their respective team. I think there would be too much Golden State Warrior. I really, I really do. Kevin Durant on the rotation, being the guy, being the long, lengthy guy that he was, wherever he, you know, has been previous with the Oklahoma City Thunder, and his decision to leave was based on the amount of talent that the Thunder had around them. Didn't have much. They had your eventual, maybe, MVP of the NBA in Russell Westbrook, but they had Steven Adams on the inside, which did not get it done. There wasn't enough firepower from the Thunder to really light it up and the San Antonio Spurs will find themselves... Look, this will go to game five. Okay, this will go to five games. It will. It will go to five games because the Spurs will win one. But at the end of the day, Golden State Warriors will end up taking it. Hey, I call it like it is. Here on the Rude Dog Show, there is no messing around. None. None at all. I call it like it is. Uh, feel free to go check out Anthony Gilbert. A new dash game dash plan. He's one of my other sponsors. He has certainly changed the way your mindset is about players. D1 talent is looking for D1 guys, looking for the D1 skill set in the 2018 NFL draft. So get started now. Don't wait until the last minute, you student athletes out there trying to get to the next level. If you don't start now, you'll find yourself behind. You don't want to be behind. Nobody wants to be behind. You want to be in front. You've done your best in your respective college. Why not call on Anthony Gilbert at new-game-plan.com. D1 talent, apply and apply now. Go to johnmalecki.com. He can turn your furniture dreams into a reality. That is what he does. He makes some fantastic stuff. You can find him also on Instagram. You can go to the Rude Dog Show on Instagram. Throw me a follow. I'll follow one back. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for all the likes and the commentary. I appreciate it here as well on Facebook Live. You can also go to the Show.com. Listen to all my other fantastic interviews with a lot of great guys. Again, I want to thank Sinbad for joining me here on the show today, uh, talking about everything from shenanigans uh, in uh, – <laughs> <laughs> in the military with the Air Force and uh, what he thinks of uh, of greens. And we were talking popsicles. Uh, it's always good to talk something different, to do something different. So thank you, Sinbad, for joining me here on the show. And, of course, go to SeedGiant.com. These guys have everything you need. It's not just about tickets. It's buying an experience for you to remember always. And if you go there now, use the code RUDDOG. You had a special discount. Go now, cgiant.com. 
I will have that information loaded onto the RudeDogShow.com forward slash partners. I'm always looking for great partners, and CGiant.com certainly fits that bill here on the Rude Dog Show. I'm Rudy Reyes on WBLCSports.com. I want to leave with this. For professional athletes to act unprofessional, no. No, not at all. No reason to call yourself a professional if you're not going to act like it. Yes, there are circumstances. I get it. I get it. Maybe having a bad day. Maybe what you ate didn't agree with your stomach. But at the end of the day, you have to recognize that your professionalism needs to be shown from beginning, middle, to the end. I don't care if you're on the field, the hardwood. I don't care if you're in a volleyball tournament. You have to be professional, act professional, do the professional thing. If you can't say anything nice, say nothing at all. Anybody heard that? I know I have many times. <laughs> I grew up with that type of uh, <laughs> that type of conversation. But make sure you check out cgiant.com for everything you need for seats, tickets. I got Oakland Coliseum not five hours away from me. I have uh, formerly Irvine Meadows, now Verizon Wireless Amphitheater as well. Irvine, I mean, I'm here in Orange County. There is so much to go see and do. Don't just buy tickets, buy an experience at SeatGiant.com. That almost wraps it up for me here on the Rude Dog Show. But the bottom line is this. If you're a professional, stick to professionalism. Act professional. Be a professional. If you don't want to be a professional, then stop that profession. Go behind the scenes and say, Eric, can I take your order? Do that. Don't be unprofessional. You get paid too much money to uh, follow any type of contractual obligations that you need to adhere to in order to be professional. In order to have post-media conversations about how you felt the game went. What was it like on the floor? Do these people have to be nice to you? Do, they, do, do these sports professionals need to be nice to you? No, they don't need to. But that's what you call professional courtesy. And that's something that needs to be applied and adhered to by professional athletes everywhere. End of story. That's all I have. That's all I have. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Rude Dog Show. Again, I want to thank Sinbad for joining me here on the show uh, for about 15 minutes. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for the listener uh, conversation, uh, the input here on Facebook Live. Make sure you download the app. Go to the RudeDogShow.com. Download the app. I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, right here at WBLZSports.com. This is Rudy Reyes. Have a great afternoon, everyone.